Um, my name is Michel. Today I'm going to walk you through our brand new Big Rep Blade uh, software in order to use the machines and the software correctly. We're going to go through the essential. Let's start. Now we're going to import the STL into the software. The software works with STL and OBJs as a geometry input. I'm going to drag and drop a file. And that is that same robotic lawnmower. Um, in this case, um, yeah, there it is, sitting in the machine volume. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit the tools of orienting. I can move it around, uh, X, Y, Z axes. Um, I can scale it, which I won't do because we want it at the real scale. And I can rotate the part. Um, in this case, uh, just a little bit upwards and with the surfaces um, um, facing the front of the machine. I will also drag it a little bit to the front um, so it is closer to the main doors of the machine. As you know, the Big Rep machine, uh, the Big Rep Pro, is, is a big machine and it has like uh, the, the most comfortable access is from the front. Therefore, I want my print at the front. Um, in red, the red marks would be the contact points, like the areas marked in red are the contact points uh, of the support with the model. Um, I am naturally trying to minimize these uh, in order to get as less contact with the model as possible and also to optimize the use of the material. Obviously, if I use more support, it costs more, uh, it has uh, longer printing times, and so on. Um, next thing I'll do is to be sure about my extruder setup. So again, in this case, we're using uh, under extruder uh, zero, T0, an MXT extruder. This is a propriety um, technology of BigRep. And in this case, we use uh, the PA66, so the nylon. But yet, there's a drop-down menu on which you will find all the possible material that we offer. Um, you can buy them straight from our web shop. Uh, and remember that these materials, we worked really hard to choose them, um, to calibrate them for our machine, and to fine-tune the software to support them. So every time you choose a big web material, um, you get all the fine-tunings automatically in our new software. Uh, useless to say, they come in a large variety of colors uh, and material properties. We got TPU, ProHD, we got PETG, we got performance material like the PA66 and high temperature materials. And of course, the second extruder, which is more the classic um, extruding technology, what we call the ACE, a one millimeter nozzle diameter. And we're going to use a natural color BVOH, which is a water soluble support. Again, big wrap material. Um, so, with this extruder combination, um, I would like to calculate uh, the part for the first time. Um, I let the computer crunch it a little bit. Um, calculation can sometimes uh, be quite long. Make sure you have a strong computer for this. Um, in this case, the complexity of the part is quite high. Once the computer finishes uh, calculating, I got a visualizator. Uh, I can see a solid view of the part, extra view, or the layer view. What I'm interested in is to see the layer view so I can um, look at how um, the software will slice the part. Um, in this case, it slices it without the support materials. Uh, interestingly enough, we're going to have um, to set it up in the software to print, but uh, this is an opportunity for us to see how the machine will print uh, this geometry and the way it's going to be constructing um, the part layer by layer. Um, this all looks good. Uh, one of the things that I have to look at is um, the accuracy of the lines or how well uh, they fill up. In this case, there's two outlines, or one outline and one infill line. They all look smooth. Um, I believe it will lead to a nice print, a nice part. 
let's move on to the support. Um, I have to um, engage the support. Um, I might have forgot to mention, but uh, we have different qualities you can choose from. Um, in this case, a 0 0.6 uh, millimeter layer height. That's what I've chose for this print. This is a good uh, compromise between uh, quality and print times. Uh, since we see the model itself is about one day and four hours to print. Um, here in the lower part of the screen, you got the statistics of the printing. Uh, I can look at more details at the material usage or the print time. Next thing, I'm going to engage the support materials. So in this case, I have no support engaged. Um, I'm going to roll down. There's a lot of settings you can, you can play around with. Now we're going to engage the dual extrusion. I'm going to make sure that the second extruder is working for the support material. But we're going to use a trick or like a feature we call an interface layer. So we do not want to use too much of these uh, BVOH uh, because the MXT, the Big Rep MXT technology is way faster than any other extrusion technology you might know. Um, so we're going to use it uh, for most of the print, including the supports. But yet we're going to use a thin interface layer of BVOH between the two different portion of the PA66 uh, prints because PA66 has a very strong interlayer connection and it is impossible to support a print from nylon with supports from nylon. Uh, let me set the, the support in. Here we're going to generate support, da, 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 da. interface, extruder. Okay, we have support. Um, the support is mainly made by the MXT extruder, and then the interface layer will be printed using the second extruder. Now I'm going to make sure that the second extruder knows it's going to print the interface layer and let us see how it goes. Now I'm optimizing the orientation, obviously to save print time, to save material use here. Um, by playing the, with the orientation of the part, I was able to reduce at least 10 hours of the print time. Um, this, can be, this can be done further. Uh, there are all kinds of parameters that can uh, influence this, like the support density, the support uh, printing speed, and so on. Um, since uh, it's just a short tutorial, I'm not going to go deeper into those things. Uh, we're going to have to continue um, as it is. Next thing we're going to do is uh, we'll learn how to save the file and send it to the printer. Um, slicing software, like slicing software, it speaks with the machine through G codes. Uh, in this case, we have a combination of G and M codes. Um, this is incorporated in the software. You don't have to worry about this. Uh, it is imperative to use this software with Big Rep Pro machines. Uh, on other big rep platform, you might be able to use other slicers, but the Pro uh, can work only with uh, big rep blade software. Um, by saving to file, I save the G code on the hard drive. After we save the file to, a, to the hard drive of the computer or any server you want to save it on, um, I'm going to show you the interface of the machine. Um, now we simply drag and drop uh, the, the, the G code uh, straight into the interface of the machine. I'm going to open the interface of the machine. This is our um, interface with the big rep machines. I can either upload the job uh, through choosing the folder in my computer or uh, simply drag and drop the thing into the queue of the machine. Um, it uploads, then the machine knows that this is the work that comes up next. Um, and next time I add the machine, it's gonna, um, also according to commands, um, it's going to preheat the machine to the determined materials. 
um, and so on. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of the Big Red Blade uh, basics. Um, the software is available free of charge uh, on our website. Click the link below to find it. Um, this would be a good tool for you to evaluate uh, either buying uh, Big Red machines or materials. Uh, it will give you a very good accurate idea of printing time and all kinds of technical data. And in general, it's a good slicing software. Thank you very much.